1975, a movie that would change the course of cinema history and leave an everlasting impression on popular culture burst onto the scene. It cemented its director's place as an internationally acclaimed movie maker and broke countless records at the box office. It seemed as though everyone was hooked on Jaws and the story of a man, mindless man-eating killer lurking in the depths of Amity Island. Its legacy lives on today, and while it may have inspired many aspiring naturalists who dreamed of following in the footsteps of the movie's marine scientist, it's fair to say it also led to a strong public demonization of sharks, the effects of which are still felt today. The Jaws effect, a term coined by Dr. Christopher Neff from the University of Sydney, can be attributed to creating a spiral of clickbait and media frenzy following the film. Between 1958 and 2019, one study found more than 100 films featuring sharks portrayed them as being potentially da uh, dangerous to humans. Ultimately, fear sells. And we've been led to believe that sharks intentionally bite humans, that all human-shark interactions end fatally, and that we need to cull sharks to reduce this risk. This simply isn't true. Here in the UK, it seems all a shark needs to do is pop its fin above the water's surface, and fear immediately sets in. Most of the time, these uh, headline shark fin photos aren't even newsworthy in the first place. Newsflash. Shark lives in the ocean, a.k.a. where it lives. <laughs> Sometimes these shark fin photos are actually uh, a seal resting or even sometimes a sewage pipe. Growing up, I was fascinated with life in our oceans. I fell in love with its beauty, yet its brutality and its fragility. But sharks have always had a, uh, a special place in my heart. The first, place, the first time I saw a great white shark and I looked it in the eyes, I didn't feel scared. I felt exhilarated and uh, very emotional, but never frightened. Indeed, sharks are very different uh, in reality to the image that's portrayed on the screen. Having spent time on a great white shark cage diving boat in South Africa, I think it's easy to tell that the uh, individuals that we see in the ocean today are very different to what Hollywood would like us to believe that they are. Indeed, dare I say it, but what you can witness is almost a difference in personality uh, between individual sharks. The jaw extension images, you've got a clip, quick glimpse there, that we've been uh, conditioned to believe and associate with sharks are actually a, a split second moment, a blink and you'll miss it moment. We've often been led to believe as well that great white sharks are the kings of the ocean. Uh, they are highly successful predators, but everything is not quite as it seems. Following recent developments in South Africa, work, work led by Alison Towner, PhD candidate at Rhodes University, Marine Dynamics and the Dyer Island Conservation Trust, has documented two orca, known as port and starboard, predating on great white sharks with their livers, like oceanic Hannibal lectors. Perhaps it's time we reassess the narrative on the ocean's hierarchy. Are great whites really the kings of the ocean, or is it actually killer whales? It may surprise you that in the waters surrounding the British Isles, we have around 40 species of shark that call our waters home for at least part of the year. These include the basking shark, which is the world's second largest shark, all the way down to smaller species like the lesser spotted cat shark, and my study species, the blue shark, which undertakes long migrations across the North Atlantic each summer to reach our waters following the Gulf Stream. Sharks are a highly diverse group of animals. There are over 500 different species of them, and as we explore more of the global ocean, we are finding more of them. Although we've been conditioned to fear sharks, in reality, uh, what's going on in, in our uh, global ocean is, is very different to, to what we see on the news. Most of the time, when we meet sharks in the news, it's because a human-shark interaction hasn't ended particularly well. Believe it or not, there are people out there who do intentionally uh, harass sharks that go out there to touch them, but needless to say, if someone turned up in your kitchen one day and started poking you, you'd probably be a bit snappy too. So it's best to avoid that and, and maintain a, a respectful distance whenever possible. And while we've been conditioned to fear sharks, I really would like to stress that this isn't, isn't necessary. 
Sharks are a really vital part of our marine ecosystem. And while we may have been conditioned to fear them, in reality, it's sharks that should fear us. It's incredibly important to stress that fatal incidences between humans and sharks are incredibly rare. Indeed, the International Shark Attack file this year has published a 10-year low in fatal unprovoked shark incidences. Sharks have been on our planet longer than trees have. These meticulously designed apex predators have been roaming around our ocean for around 400 million years and survived five mass extinctions. But the one thing that they couldn't outswim was us, humanity. Scientists sadly estimate that around 100 million sharks are removed from our global ocean every year, although this figure could be much higher in the realms of 273 million. Just want you to sit with that figure for a couple of minutes. 273 million sharks are removed from our global ocean every year, and scientists have recorded declines of over 70% in uh, pelagic species of shark, that's those found in the open ocean. I, yeah, I don't need to tell you, but this is, you know, this is unsustainable, and sharks are really being pushed towards the brink of extinction, and business as usual cannot carry on. The global shark fin and meat trade are powering the demise of sharks across our global ocean. But I think it's really important to mention that Europe is often left out of shark conservation campaign narratives. We often overlook what's going on in Europe uh, in favor of what we see abroad in other countries. But this goes much further than the shark, global shark fin trade. Europe, for example, uh, is responsible for around a fifth of the global shark meat trade with Spain being the top exporter and Italy a top importer of global shark meat products. The rise in seafood fraud and mislabeling is deeply problematic for our global ocean, with shark meat often being sold without consumers even being aware of it. But we're not out of the woods here in the UK either. Recent research by the University of Exeter has indicated that in our fish and chip shops, globally threatened species of shark are on sale. Bottom line is, whether through targeted fisheries or bycatch, that's the incidental capture of sharks when targeting another species, um, is unsustainable for our global ocean and we are losing sharks at an alarming rate. How we think about these animals is really important about whether or not we're willing to invest in their conservation. Psychology plays a really important role in, in our desire to protect certain animals. And I think it's really interesting that Steven Spielberg, who was at the forefront of, of Jaws, this movie made, made him into the internationally acclaimed director that he is today, has actually made comments regretting the real-world implications that the, the film has had um, on shark conservation. And indeed, Peter Benchley, who wrote the, the novel Jaws, has made similar comments. We often look at dolphins and penguins and whales as being at the forefront of uh, conservation campaigns because they make us feel warm and fuzzy inside. We have this emotional connection with these animals that makes us want to protect them. But does sharks make you feel warm and fuzzy inside? I mean, unless you're someone like me, probably not. But their demise from the global ocean is something that we all really need to be terribly alarmed about. Why is this? Well, sharks are, well, I think they're beautiful, but sharks are doctors of the ocean. Uh, eminent explorer Dr. Sylvia Earle has been on record saying, you should be scared if you're in the ocean and you don't see sharks. Sharks play a really fundamental ecological role by predating on weak and sick individuals below them within the food chain and ensuring species diversity that keeps the ocean healthy. We're in Manchester today and we are quite far from the sea, but the ocean's health is integral to every single one of you's health. It's really important that we make, make, make sure that this environment it main, uh, is healthy. And as sharks have been removed from our global ocean and have coexisted with everything that, that there is there within that ecosystem for 400 million years, removing them can have some dire, uh, dire consequences. So what can we do about this? What can we do about uh, the turning the tide on, on the future facing, facing sharks? Well, I'm a glass half full kind of girl, and I like to believe that there's a lot of hope and optimism all around, and we are beginning to move in the right direction. Indeed, last year, international regulations were put in place that would regulate 
uh, almost all species that are traded on the global shark fin market, which is an absolutely astounding step forward. But there's obviously still more to be done, and I think it starts with every single person in this room reassessing the, the stereotypes that we've, we've come to know so, so clearly. The other thing that's worth mentioning is funding. For evolutionarily distinct animals, sharks do receive relatively little funding, and there's a lot of questions that we still have to answer about them. The great white sharks that I spoke about earlier on, although they are the hits of a lot of documentaries, we still have never seen them reproduce. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of questions that still remain to be answered, and if Steven Spielberg is listening somewhere, it would be great if he could provide some money. <laughs> but, going back to what I was saying earlier on, I think change is really important if we're, if we're going to, to turn the tide on this, and our perceptions um, are important. There are a lot of people within the media, a lot of organizations that, that capitalize on societal st stereotypes and really uh, push uh, narratives forward that aren't always, uh, aren't always true. Um, Discovery's Char Shark Week, for example, um, it would be amazing if that program actually focused on the diversity of sharks that we see in our ocean and the researchers that study them. Do we really need another documentary looking about a human um, shark interaction that didn't end particularly well? Wouldn't it be fantastic if we actually made more of a noise about the threat humans pose to sharks rather than the threats they pose to us? What I'm talking about may seem as though it's impossible. You know, we've, we've kind of vilified sharks for as long as, you know, the, the last couple of decades at least, as long since, the, since this movie came out. But I want to just provide you a quick example to show why what I'm talking about is, is not impossible. It wasn't that long ago that we actually vilified whales when people believed the narrative of Moby Dick and seafarers would be nervous about coming across these now what we know as gentle giants. Whaling was a considerable uh, global industry in the last century and it's thought that we killed around three million whales pushing many of these species to the edge of extinction. But we turned the tide on Moby Dick and we decided that we wanted to protect whales and we understood their important ecological role within marine ecosystems. I would like to think that we can do the same for sharks. Sharks are on the brink of extinction and they are in the desperate need of a rebrand. They are a vital part of our marine ecosystem and the current future that they're facing means that our lives will be very different if we have a removal of them from our global ocean. So, it starts with every single one of you in this room, and I'm not expecting you to all jump in the water and want to go and swim with sharks, but just having conversations about these things with people in your lives and, and reassessing some of those, those stereotypes we are coming across on a daily basis can really go a long way. So shark, so, so sorry, so whales uh, underwent a rebrand uh, from the era of Moby Dick, and I would like to think that sharks can undergo a rebrand from the era of Jaws. In a few years' time, even a decade's time, I would like it if we looked back on how we we're, have a relationship with sharks now and uh, think of it as an archaic moment in, in humanity's history. Sharks are running out of time, but I think we have the future in our hands, and it's up to all of us to have a rebrand on Jaws. Thank you.